Welcome everyone to season two of the Leicester series. We are back with loads to catch you up on from general club developments to our first game of the season that we'll be playing against Crystal Palace. But more importantly, of course, we've rebuilt Leicester. We have made plenty and I mean plenty of transfers this summer to try and make this side Champions League ready. And wow, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Welcome to the video everyone, I'm Jake and I'm very very excited for this one. I love transfer specials and yeah, this is going to be phenomenal. I think we've brought in some great players and also let go of some players too. Before we get into it all though, if you could keep showing your support and smashing that like button and the subscribe button if you're that far into this series now. Hopefully you can press the subscribe button, it's completely free and you can change your mind at any point. Um, if we have hit 10,000 subscribers, just know that at the time of recording we haven't yet, so if I'm not talking about it, that's why, but yeah. Very, very excited for the future of what's coming on this channel. Comment down below to get involved. I'll respond to every single comment. There's also a Football Manager Discord in the description with a great community of people who help you out or you can just share your saves or share your tactics, whatever it might be. And the last thing, I'll mention it at the start of each season that we do, but there is a join button near the subscribe button where you can become a channel member and support the channel. There's perks for doing so at each different tier. For example, you can have your name in the game as one of the youth intake players and whatnot. So yeah, any support like that is greatly appreciated but let's kick off season two and we'll start off I guess with our friendlies and how they've gone. Now, um, we won our first three, the ones that we'd expect to win. We then lost 5-4 to Frankfurt and 2-1 to Villarreal, but I'm not reading into all that too much. And today's game will be against Crystal Palace, who we've apparently lost our previous two meetings against. I don't know why it says they're both away from home, but either way, we are playing them away today, which won't be an easy match, but I'm hoping we can get over the line. We've also stole one of their better players as well. So with that being said, I guess we start talking about transfers. Um, outside of that in general, we've improved our youth recruitment and our academy coaching the board are also happy with us gave us some pretty good free reign and we had 60 odd million pounds to spend and how did we spend it well first of all we raised some funds by letting Dennis Pratt go for 14 million pounds to Wolves as soon as the transfer window opened they came in for him and I was happy to let him go he played a fair bit last season but not a crazy amount and wasn't overly impressive either so we're just going to let him move on let him get on with his career at Wolves and take 14 million for him Hamza Chowdhury came back off loan and instantly we let him go as well. He's also gone to Wolves for £7.25 million after a decent season on loan at Watford last year. I was happy to take the money for him. I didn't see him as part of our squad. So, ka more money for us to spend. We then let go of all of our other goalkeepers, Van Altai Bayandir, and I'll explain why in a second, but Iverson has gone for a couple million, Danny Ward went for a couple million, and Alex Smithies also left the club for a couple million pound each. Now, I'm focused on Iverson because he was the younger of the bunch and maybe the most talented as well but you'll see why we let them go in a second but I was pretty happy to we raised five or six million pounds between them all and at one point we nearly spent all of that goalkeeping money to get David Sanchez of Brighton because they got relegated he was available for a release clause of five million pounds but he decided he wanted to join Forrest as a starter as opposed to back up at our club but still we found a solution which we'll look at in a second but that was all of our major sales the first player that we bought in was Chelsea Chelsea's Callum hudson Adoy, who had a decent year out last year at Bayer Leverkusen, actually a very good year when he did play, and we signed him for £22 million from Chelsea, which I think is a good deal, considering you can now see just how much he's worth. He did want to be a star player at the club with a massive contract, but... We were okay to let it happen. I'll show you my plans in terms of our squad planner in a second, but he will be a big part of our team. I think he's got a lot of potential. We got him at a cut price deal, English international as well. And I'm really hoping that it will work out for him at the club. Is this coming from my Chelsea bias as a Chelsea fan? Maybe, but I do think he'll do a great job for us. Able to play just as well on either wing. I think Callum hudson Adoy will be a great sign-in going forward. I mentioned that we stole a player off Crystal Palace and it is their left back an England international Tyrick Mitchell who looks very well rounded and a very good fallback option a great tackler who can also cross he's quick he's strong he's mentally well drilled as well a good passer everything a modern day fallback needs to be and for me he is now my starting left back going forward we paid 22 million pounds for him I think that's a pretty good deal and I think this one will definitely work out at the club another England international on board someone who he can sell for a lot of money in the future it's just started hailing it down outside so hopefully 
you can't hear that. But Tyrick Mitchell is our new star left back. Our sign-ins of England internationals didn't stop there though, as we made a deal for Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton to join our club, or DCL, as I'm going to call him to make our life easier. Everton did get relegated last year in 20th place, so he was available for only 25 mil, which I think is a good deal. Physically, he is perfection, right? Because he's got 16 strength, a pace as well as jumping reach and agility and balance, naturally fit everything you'd want there. High work rate, high level of heading, first touch finishing. He's got everything he needs to be a perfect pressing forward. An England international and someone that I think at 26 is going to be a huge player for years to come. Our final purchase was our only non-English purchase. As you can see, we decided not to splash all our cash on one or two players. We decided to spread it around the squad and we bought in Josip Sutalo to replace Daniel Rugani who came in on low last year. Now Sotalo is here to challenge for a first team spot, a six foot three towering centre back, great in the air with good heading, good tackler who can also pass decently well, but is mainly a hard tackling defender. But you know what? He could definitely be a good ball player, composed, great anticipation. And to sign him for only £12.5 million from Zagreb is a great deal where he was really good last year. And I'm hoping he'll be just as good for us this season. With Tyrick Mitchell and Justin able to play at left back, we decided to let Luke Thomas get a season of proper football, consistent first team football out on loan at Sevilla. So we'll see how well he gets on there, but that is a good club to go on loan to if he can get into their first team and challenge for first team opportunities, which I'm hoping he will if he has any kind of desire of being a big player for us. But I could definitely see Luke Thomas being a great player for us going forward and challenging for that spot with Tyrick Mitchell. He just needs a little bit more development to get to that point. So that was our transfer business done so far, but we still have really big interest in Ndidi, whose contract is running out at the end of the year. So maybe we take a deal for him and also James Madison. We've got players lined up to bring in if anything does go wrong. So keep your eyes there. Next episode, we might have spent another 100 million. I don't know. Um, but just to show you around the team and what I've got planned in goal, we've got Bayandir as our starter and Jacob Stolarzic, who is a Leicester Academy graduate who was on loan at Fleetwood last year in League One did okay but look at his attributes he looks like he could be a very good goalkeeper for us and being an academy graduate we've decided to make him our backup this year I'm sure he will be Poland's national team goalkeeper at some point if we can keep developing him so I think he's a great number two and he can play in the cups right back options are Castagna and Pereira able to compete for that spot together left back will be Justin and Mitchell this year with our ball playing centre backs being Nelson and Fez also Sotalo if we need him him and then our other centre back role will be Sotalo and Soyuncu competing for that spot. Sotalo, by the way, is apparently an elite centre back at the age of 23, which is great to see. Our ball winning midfielders are going to be Ndidi and Sander Berger this year, and then our roaming playmakers will be Sumare and Dewsbury Hall. On the right, we've got Madison and Berardi. I'm trying to get rid of Albrighton, but he won't be part of my squad this year. On the left hand side, we've got Shelderup and Barnes, and then Hudson Adoy can play on either one and will likely be the starter on the left-hand side. There's part of me with how much Sheldrup's developed and how good I consider Hudson Odoi has been to maybe let Harvey Barnes go. He wasn't great last year. He's on a big contract here at Leicester. Maybe we start thinking about letting him go, maybe next season. But for now, we'll just test out that position. We've got a lot of competition. Some players are going to be unhappy, but we need it if we want to be a Champions League side playing two times a week. And that was a big part of my transfers this year was to make sure we had not just one good player in each position, but two, so that when we had to rotate, it didn't feel like we were weakening the team too much. As our advanced forwards, we've got Ian Acho and the 36-year-old Jamie Vardy, and as our pressing strikers, we have got Daka and Calvert-Lewin, both of which can also do the other striking role too, and I think we've built a very, very well-rounded squad. We've still got £10 million and a decent bit of wage budget to go. You can see Ndidi is getting offers, but we're holding out for 40-ish million pounds for him. He is supposedly wanted by Chelsea. Now it's changed to Southampton and Almeria, so maybe he won't go anywhere. But Madison has interest from Inter Milan reported in the media they're willing to pay 56 million. I'd want more than that, but you know what? Let's just not worry about that until later on, until we actually get some offers. But there you go. That's our squad. That's the transfers that we've made. And it's time to check some of them out in this first match against Palace, which like I say, 
Won't be too easy. We've been good, but not phenomenal in our preseason matches. So we will see if it all works out today. But we're going for Bayandir in goal with Pereira, Soyuncu, Nelson and Tirik Mitchell making his professional debut for the club. And Didi and Sumare with Madison and hudson Adoy on the left with Ian Acho and Dominic Calvert-Lewin up front. So three English internationals getting their opportunity today. Some great talent on the bench. Hopefully we can have just as good of a season. My aims are to get in top four yet again and hopefully make the knockout stages of the Champions League. With the squad we've got, I think it could be possible, but we need to make sure we get off to a winning start. And that comes down to today, I guess. So let's get into the match. I haven't actually managed any of the friendlies myself, nor do I ever do. So this is my first time seeing a lot of these guys as much as it is yours. Yeah, let's go out there, put on a show for the fans and kick off the season. It's the away fans, of course, because we are at Crystal Palace's stadium let's give this a go. So it looks like Burnley came up last year, Norwich have came up, and who else has been promoted? Middlesbrough, of all teams, have made it to the Premier League. So I think they're three teams that we can maybe expect to beat. But of course, the main team we'd be worrying about this year will be Manchester City, who are likely going to storm the league yet again. So we'll see how that one goes. But the first highlight of the season, 20 minutes in, is for Crystal Palace. And it is Edward scoring a goal. And we're already 1-0 down after 20 minutes. It was the first real highlight. I can't tell whether Bayandir made a mistake or whether he made a good save initially. It didn't look like a great shot from the edge of the box, but we'll see it here. It came out to Williams, who struck the shot. Sorry? What the hell has just happened there? Can we go, we can go back a little bit, right? How do we, uh, how do we rewind for a few seconds? Is it here? Right, let's go, let's go back 10 seconds. Does Bayandir not save this? The ball goes out of play and bounces back in. Is that, is that what I've seen? Let's take a look. So Bayandir comes in. Let's slow it down. So at this point, he hasn't made a save yet. But the shot comes in. He makes a save. Yeah, right. So it bounces off the pitch and bounces back for Edward to tap in. God, we all love Football Manager, don't we? Right, fantastic. We're losing because of a glitch in the game. That's nice to see. I mean, maybe it's just a fault of the animation. and You know, the animation's shown the wrong thing happening. But clearly that ball was going out of play. So how it's popped back in for Edward to tap in, I don't know. And that's really unfortunate because that's going to really hit the morale a little bit in this game. We might end up losing because of that, but we've also near enough conceded again here. So we do need to be careful. It's not been the best of starts for us, despite some pretty solid possession and some good XG. Crystal Palace have the higher one, but I guess that does come from a tap-in that was given to Odson Edward up top. But we need to be better than this. I'd like to see one highlight with us on the ball at least. And here we go. Maybe it'll be this one. Here's Omar Richards. He plays it through to Mitchell, but Mitchell intercepts. And Ian Acho wins it back for hudson Adoy. The reason today, by the way, that it's Calvert-Lewin and Ian Acho is that Vardy's just recovering from an injury and Patson Daka is injured. So I didn't want to start Vardy yet. And then outside of that, you know, I thought the best choice would be to go Calvert-Lewin and Ian Acho up top. But there we go. That's brilliant from Mitchell. A great interception. Madison fires a long ball over top to Ian Acho. Can he get his account open for the season? He can. It is 1-1. They're flagging for offside, but for me, he was clearly on. It was a great ball as well. Whoever played it in, I can't remember now, but it has been awarded. I don't think there was anything wrong with that at all. Who was it that played the ball? It was, of course, James Madison. What a ball over the top that was. Ian Acho with a brilliant run to get past Anderson at the back, and then he slots it away. Fantastic. 1-1, and we go into halftime level, unless something's about to change here. Crystal Palace kick off with Gerhi knocking it back to Anderson. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for season two here. I think it's going to be great fun with the players that we have signed. And we might have a chance to score a second here with hudson Adoy. Going down the left flank, he crosses in and Calvert-Lewin scores. Two of our new signings combining for the goal. Calvert-Lewin is going to be phenomenal in the air and hudson Adoy is a pretty good crosser as well. So I'm hoping them two will combine. But this is what we want to see. Great play from hudson Adoy down the left. It was a good ball in. It didn't have to be the best ball when Calvert-Lewin's in there because he will rise and he did and he got his head to the ball and we are now 2-1 up and suddenly we go into halftime with a completely new team talk. And but yeah, massive thank you to you guys for your support on the series so far. Really, really do appreciate it. I'm not just saying it. I love making these videos and it means a lot when I get other people watching them too. So thank you for that. Altai Bayandiers came out here to claim the ball really high up the pitch, but we have found Sumare. He pings it out to hudson Adoy. Can he put another good ball in maybe? He is a good crosser. We have got him playing inside forward and not an inverted winger, despite his finishing being pretty poor. But that's just the way the tactic works. And he could have scored then. Oh, but it was a great tackle. Really good ball in from Tyrick Mitchell, though, who bombed down that left flank. Uh, but yeah, hudson Adoy. I'm not expecting to score a crazy amount of goals. I just want him to be uh, the creator, really, on that left-hand side. And I think he will be. But here's Ndidi with a long shot, just over. And it looks like we now will go into half-time 
with a 2-1 lead, which I will certainly take. And Manchester City are beating Chelsea on the first game of the season 2-1. Second half, first highlight happens in the 60th minute. I don't even know if we get five subs or not, um, but I'll have to figure that out. Maybe it's only a season one thing because of the World Cup. It shouldn't be though. We should definitely always get five subs in the Prem. Bayandia with a very good save of his legs to stop Edward getting his second. Just a shame it didn't bounce back off the edge of the pitch for Edward again, wouldn't it? I am going to report that as a bug after the game because that, that just wasn't fair, man. It came off the pitch, came back just for Edward to tap it in. Um, but 70 minutes in, let's try this substitute thing. Do we have five or not? We're going to bring on Jamie Vardy for Kelechi Iheanacho. We're also going to bring on Shoulder Up for Hudson Adoy. A very nice debut from him. Pereira can come off for Castagna. And if we can make other subs, I would like to get Sotalo on the pitch, which we can do. He's going to play as our centre back. And then Berardi for Madison. Five substitutes, five very good players coming on now. It's not like before at the start of the year where I was bringing on players I didn't really trust. Now, everyone that I'm bringing on, I would happily start in this game as well. So I'm very happy we've got the squad to that level. Now, the next job will be to start keeping our star players and adding star players on top of that. Um, and also developing our young talent because we do have a young squad who could grow as the club grows up the league. So Yunchu with a good header away. The substitute's not on just yet by the looks of it. And here's Calvert-Lewin trying to initiate a counter. Finds hudson Adoy. hudson Adoy is probably going to try and put a cross in. He finds Calvert-Lewin blocked into Johnston's hands and that will likely be the end of the highlight and it is. City showing everyone what they're about today winning 3-1 against Chelsea. Ossiman scoring and getting sent off but De Bruyne getting injured uh, is a good sign hopefully. I mean it sounds horrible but if he is injured for a long time that could slow down Man City's chances of winning the league as easy as last year but either way th they'll find it comfortable right. It's a really poor clearance from Bayern Deer, but Samari as well Berardi to Cavett-Lewin. Here's Berardi. I'm hoping to see more from this year as he settles down into the Premier League. He's going to pull it back to Ndidi. Great ball in. Great finish from Wilf Ndidi. We're now 3-1 up. And that's a great start for us. I also have been noticing this, right? So that's our first professional game of the season. Ndidi scores and it says two goals. He has been at the AFCON. So is it counting his AFCON goals? Because he did score one as his total goals for the season. I guess that is right, but I thought usually it just shows club goals. And maybe that is a glitch. Maybe it's the way it's always been. I haven't really noticed. But either way, it's been a great start to the season for us. Our new players all helping out in today's match. And if we can make it 4-1, that'll be a great start. And we might even be at the top of the league after that. Mitchell bombs it up towards Shelder up, but he doesn't quite make it. Palace go forward. They've got El Sharari of all people. That's a great signing for them. What a guy he used to be. He used to think he was going to be a world-class talent, didn't we? But it never really worked out for him. And here's Bayern Deer, kicking it forward in the 90th minute. We will have Calvert-Lewin to hit with those long kicks now, which is going to be useful for us. But here's Abui. Abui's in. It's a good save from Bayern Deer, who is having a good game, despite some poor distribution here and there. In terms of saves, he's certainly doing his job. Even on that first goal, he did what he could. And here's El Sharari with the corner. Man City go 4-1 up against Chelsea. I don't know why I'm keeping such an eye on them. I don't think we're going to compete for a league title just yet. But it's just interesting to see where the bar is set for this season. I mean, it looks like we've set a high bar for ourselves, though, with a 3-1 away win against Palace. Not happy with the amount of XG we gave them and the amount of chances. But overall, great performances across the board, particularly our new players. It was an 8.2 for Mitchell against his old club. Dominic Calvert-Lewin with a 7.6. He scored a goal. hudson Adoy got an assist and got a 7.6 average match rating. Very happy with that. A brilliant start to the season. And if we can keep that up, who knows just how far we'll go this year. Southampton will be our next game. They, of course, did get European football last season. It's going to be a competitive season in the Premier League, but we will just hope with the signs we brought in, we can do as well as we did last year. So thank you guys for watching. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.